Good morning and welcome to today at the races at Laurel Park on the final day of our summer session here at the track by the tracks. Tim Tullock joined by Callie Francois. It did go by fast this summer. We were here at Laurel all summer, opposed to last summer when it was a long, hot summer with all the uh, things we went through last summer. With rebuilding oh, the it, was, it was a long summer with the action at Pimlico going on, but we're, we were back here at Laurel. Everybody was kind of happy to be back at Laurel, and it did. It went by very, very fast and had a bit of a sizzler. Had some nice races yesterday. Kieran McGee, Lacey Gaudet, and Brittany Russell, both e Brittany and Sheldon Russell, each getting to each along with Jorge Ruiz as well so and everything is still it's it's still heating up a little bit but we'll get into that a little bit later as far as the jockey yeah trader. let's talk about yesterday a little bit uh, there's a good line of movie that says if you build it they will come yes and a big uh, shout out to our horse players our fans you sure did mm -hmm. come yesterday 4.2 million in handle on a saturday which had no stakes just good quality fields and that's what the horse players want and that's what we gave them on Friday. That's what they we gave them yesterday. And a nice card here today. Could be we tricky at spot. It's a couple good maiden races and some good turf uh, turf races uh, this afternoon also. But before we get to that, we've got a few things to look forward to. First of all, the Timonium meet, which starts this coming Friday. This coming Friday, you're going to be seeing me and Frank Vespi lining up the Timonium meet for this next upcoming weekend and the weekend after that, leaning into September. And don't forget, we will be there on Labor Day at the Timonium Maryland State Fair meet. Then we move uh, from Timonia back to Old Hilltop, September 9th through September 25th. We will be running Friday through Sunday uh, through September 25th up there at uh, Pimlico. Because today is the last day of the meet, it's a mandatory payout this afternoon. Everything's got to go. We have a carryover, a little bit of a carryover in the Super High Five, which starts in race one. We'll talk about that, 2300 We have a carryover in the Rainbow Pick Six of $2,600. Now keep in mind that the minimum wager in the Rainbow Pick Six has been canceled, so you can, has been removed. You can wager as much as you want, or greater than 20 cents, on the Rainbow Pick Six uh, this afternoon. So certainly keep that in mind. We'll watch these pools grow, and uh, maybe someone comes ho goes home with a little extra cash in their pocket. Well, we look outside, Callie. We're going to find the track is fast. The course is firm. It's a little overcast, but it's pleasant. That's fine. It's fine to have an overcast on a day like this because the temperature has bumped up a little bit today. We're at sitting at 85. A little bit more of a breeze than yesterday, which is why we're out overcast today, but none of the less still going to be a wonderful last day of summer racing here at Laurel Park. Okay, well now that all the housekeeping is taken care of, let's get down to business and get this show started. Race one, claiming two Lifetime 16,000 kicks off uh, the early pick five as always a 50 cent minimum 12% industry low takeout mandatory payout on the early pick five. This one goes a mile on the turf course rail setting at 35 feet and Callie, uh, Callie you and I are in pretty much agreement here. We We're going to start with the four. Please marry me for Rudy Sanchez Solomon who's uh, still tied with Claudio Gonzalez for the leading trainer title. We'll talk more about that uh, later. Yomar Ortiz gets the call once again, this one's well spotted off a maiden score, and he gets back to a firm turf course this afternoon. Firm turf course. Yomar got a lot of things out of it. Gets a lot of run out of this filly, but huge gain mentally last time out of that race last time out. She was able to give away the little lead a little bit and sit off of it, relax. And just a, the only thing I have against her is that she's just a bit short, but Rudy's trying to do everything he can to get this leading trainer title. So why not go with it to the lead is where she's going to be. 19% Rudy's horses will win two in a row, so we'll see if Please Marry Me can put him above, uh, 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 beyond yes. uh, Claudio Gonzalez in the opener uh, this afternoon. The five is Bay B for Ni Niall Seville. J.D. Acosta gets the call. Uh, this one's just dropping back down to a more favorable level. Exactly. Breaking the maiden at the 16 level where it tried, got a little bit ambitious. Nonetheless, it was at Delaware where those numbers are a bit softer. Uh, but going, digging into that a little bit, uh, going into that maiden score, was able to get that one because J.D. waited a half a second, was given plenty of time to keep this filly together, gain some confidence. Last time out, she was rushed out a little bit there, so absolutely has no interest of doing so, being rushed to the top. So we'll get a nice ride back again by J.D. Acosta. And both you and I have the seven bad temper in the mix. Bottom my ticket, bottom both our tickets. Mm -hmm. Is coming out of a good race at Delaware, but as you mentioned, uh, you can sometimes you have to take those Delaware races with a grain of salt. You right. look back at her Laurel race on June 19th, 
She was behind two uh, next out winners in Pie Keller and Zola B, but still well, well beaten. She was. I mean, she and looking at her as an individual, she's a bit of a one-pace filly, and I'm just going to give her a couple of these tries of getting used to the turf. She was a little bit placed up for upwardly in that last go, so she's just constantly ticking along, getting up there in position. That kicks off the early pick five here at Laurel Park as we move on to race number two, which starts the early pick four. I put together a ticket. Uh, the first race at early pick four, race two, it's a maiden event going seven-eighths of a mile. I, it's pretty wide open mm -hmm. when I look at it. I just hit the all button here. There's six of them. Don't take any chances. It could go either way. Race three, this is another wide open race, two lifetime, 25,000 on the grass, three, four deep there, one, thank you, one, five, ten, <laughs> and eleven. Race four, two deep there. I use the one and the three, and then I single on my best bet of the day, the four, Solomon's Choice, in race five, $24 ticket to start off your day in the early pick four. Race two is a maiden event, as I mentioned. Maiden Phillies and Mares, three, four, and five-year-old, going seven-eighths of a mile. Kelly, both you and I have the one, Vibrant Judy, on top, but I have to tell you, there's nothing I like about this scenario. Uh, she's a first time starter going seven days. She's drawing the rail. However, it's Brittany 20% with Sheldon there 28% and uh, working, uh, been working well. I mean, those are the upsides. And those are the, those are the upsides. And I have, this is, those are kind of the upsides that this Philly really only has. The Hap sibling took a while to break the maiden score, and that was only at the 15 claiming level with a, tr or 15 maiden level, with the trainer who's primarily running at Thistle Downs Mountain Ear, uh, and that happened to be at Keeneland. This Vibrant Judy did sell for 80,000 as a yearling, and again, just going off of the work tab, was given a break in January at Palm Meadows, and then brought back here to Laurel so just uh, that also kind of got my radar up a little bit going about this filly as well. Yeah the second dam was all right I mean she just missed at first asking came back and broke her maiden at Belmont in her second career start but that was a long time ago right. uh, the dam did not run uh, but you know there's some things that make me a little uh, hesitant that's why I sure. went all here in the early pick four. The three is Aladro Di Fici for Claudio Gonzalez, uh, Claudio's first runner of the afternoon. J. Ron Barbosa gets the call. Uh, this one's turning back with a work sense. Has had a pretty solid form, but boy, it's just things I question when I look this horse's uh, trouble line. Uh, you know, you were right to press the all button for this race because I was just, I kind of, when I handicap, I go the horses I like, and I didn't couldn't really land a solid go but with the way I see the seven for this filly I do like the six better as she seems to be getting the hang of it uh, just the sense of getting used to being on the front end with this individual she's in that in-between spot one pace she doesn't have enough gate speed and isn't quick enough going short so the seven could work out for her today she was in between horses last time out on the backside got a reprieve around the turn and she couldn't beat the winner she ended up drifting in a little bit from getting tired from that effort well and that's and that's my issue with her uh, two times in her life she hasn't gotten away well right. and two times in her life she hasn't well run well through the stretch and that's where you get the money from the top of the wire to <laughs> home so i'm a little lukewarm on the three ladro uh, de fici the five smart yuli for uh, for tim keith this part's been heating up uh, as of late and this is a filly who's never ever fired a bad one and certainly has a condition edge over the field she does she does have that condition edge of getting over to this distance but i do like the going to the distance i like the distance i like that last trip even better she was able to sit off i'm just although i i was able to be around this filly before her first time and i also will never forget what the, when this filly got to the lead going that going the mile and eighth on the turf her ears pricked right up she absolutely loved that kind of of fitness when she was a baby she wasn't fit enough in that race on that day uh, but she just she likes being in front of others so she was able to gain a little bit mentally from that last time out just being tactically off the pace an interesting maiden event to kick off the early pick four this afternoon at laurel park as we move to race uh, number three race three kicks off the rainbow pick six on our eight race card this afternoon so keep that in mind uh, this pool will continue to grow it's got to go this afternoon so get involved. You can bet virtually anything you want on it. There's more than the 20-cent minimum on the rainbow 
uh, pick six this afternoon and Callie you did a ticket let's see how you play I did a ticket I went a little bit wide on this race uh, I especially in this claiming 25 there's a couple of horses that are coming down a couple of interesting goes in this race so this is one more one of the races where I choose to go ride race number four I just go in on the red hot uh, one that's also heating up is Bob Claceres with Mullane and Delise Vita Dale Capuano hot on the trail behind Rudy Sanchez Salmon and Claudio Gonzalez for that title in the maiden uh, mile turf event I do go wide in that as well a lot of these as Tim mentioned some nice rate handicapping races that we have going on very very competitive uh, which I do in race number seven as well that event is very very nice and in race number eight that is where I choose to do my single with foul balls for Grand Motion just winning the Delaware Del Mar Oaks yesterday and then I could have also added Lucky Lorraine in there along with the price plate that I have going on for that day for a just over $50, t $50 ticket. Not a bad ticket. Uh, like I said, get involved. It's all going today, so you might as well take a shot. Race three, rail set at 87 feet, going five and a half furlongs on the turf course, claiming price, uh, claiming race two, lifetime 25,000. We'll start with the 11. That is your top pick in this heat, uh, Cali, and that is, if I can turn Mary my Jane page, Chrome. The, wind, <laughs> the wind is wreaking havoc here a little it bit is. this afternoon. <laughs> uh, Mary Jane Chrome, look at, She's possibly getting some class relief here. There's no doubt about, uh, doubt about it. The figures are strong. She's turning back in distance. Mikey Dross is pretty good at that. But i just concerned she might get a little too outrun. That's what that's the first note I have for this filly, other than the proper drop down, which I do think is granted for this filly. But she's got she's going to be losing that gate speed. She used to have a little bit of it when she had a couple of tries going shorter, especially that seven furlong dirt event when she did break her maiden. But ever since then, going long, going slow from the gate, that's going to be her biggest issue. But uh, Mikey, as he's mentioned, Mikey Duralis route to sprint. He's at that short sampling, 29 percent hitting it. I have the five on top. Looks don't lie for Timmy Salzman. J.D. Acosta gets the time, uh, gets the call once again. I think you can throw out that race going the two turns seven and a half at uh, Delaware Park in her last start. Uh, two starts ago, she ran a lifetime best in an open A other than. That's good enough. 66, that's good enough to get it done here. And she gets uh, back to a firm turf course this afternoon she, also at Laurel. She's also a little bit off the rail, and I know she broke her maiden being on the rail, but that next time out against winners, it was a tough go. She was, it was the timing, in, she didn't like that timing in between horses, being tied in between horses, and I did think she get a, got a little bit shy on the rail, and of course, again, I agree with you, Tim, throughout that last race, she didn't, she didn't enjoy the two turns at all. The 10 is ghostly night for Claudio Gonzalez, first time off the claim for Claudio, and a maiden breaker in her most recent, and that was for the Maiden 20. Not a particularly good number, but we see these horses get a little bit better once they're in the Claudio Barn. Exactly. In the, in, I would say it's a bit of a tough go breaking from that Maiden 20 to here, but this is a logical enough step in Claudio's barn when he's able to kind of jerk them up a little bit uh, and does get that outside post to help Ghostly Knight out a little bit less pressure. And uh, real uh, quickly, I wouldn't uh, toss out the two. My flicker for Ned Allard making a turf debut. Uh, the nine Sensen uh, for uh, John Salzman. And of course, the eight Romantic Comedy for, uh, uh, romantic comedy, uh, for uh, Jamie Ness. This, this race is pretty wide open. Very, very interesting race. And I hope it takes a lot of attention as it should. Race four kicks off the late pick five this afternoon. It's going to be a mandatory payout this afternoon. No carryover. Uh, from yesterday, but it's usually very, very well played. So you might want to start studying for the late pick five here at Laurel, which gets started in race four. Uh, race four is for three-year-olds and upward, which have never won three races, claiming price 16,000. This one's go going a mile and a 16th on the main track. Callie, you have the four million on top for Bob Claceres, coming off a little bit of a break. Horacio Caramanos uh, gets the call, but Bod's pretty good off this type of layoff. He's been a bit lukewarm as of lately, but ever since he's been focusing a little bit down here on this Maryland circuit, he's had a stellar weekend so far, especially with these first and second off of the claims. Uh, and But this one's off first after the layoff, and 
she got a nice little break from that nice April score. And I, I, the barn is going so well lately. I think she's going to have a similar vengeance off of that break since April. I've just I've seen this filly in the morning, and she's absolutely fine, in fine form, fitting into this with the up level. Well, look, if she can run back to that race from April 3rd, that figure is good enough to win this race this afternoon. She just, just has to be capable of doing it off this Correct. a little bit of layoff or for sure. I have the one just in the nick of time on top. Victor Carrasco uh, gets the call uh, once again. Uh, three and four starts ago. Victor Carrasco rode this one to very, very nice finishes in starter 25s. He's getting relief today into this uh, three lifetime uh, for 16,000. There's races there that work. Loves to run second, 12 times second from 32 starts. Loves to run second, so which is why exactly why I have just a like, time in second. Of course, uh, the biggest problem with this filly is that she actually does like a wide trip, but the benefit is that Victor Carrasco knows that on this filly. If you go back in April, both of those April efforts back in February at Penn National, you have Victor Carrasco riding this horse, excuse me, Laurel, I'm sorry, Laurel, back in March at Laurel. Uh, to always, this filly needs to have that time, needs to have that room. She's kind of a slow burn coming from off, coming uh, from from that kind of trip. The five is a Dolisi Vita for Dale Capuano. Gene Avello gets the call. We're going to take a look at her la his last race. This was August 6th right here at Lowell Park. We're going to pick it up at the top of the stretch. And just going off of that, just this is a horse that has had a bit of trouble when he doesn't get his way, really not getting, really kind of throwing in the towel a little bit. Now, granted, this horse, the horse on his outside is a little bit wide, but this horse does grind it out and shows a little bit of a new type of horse, which is why we see Dale Capuano stepping this horse up in class a little bit. Stepping up in class and stretching back out, lifetime best when breaking his maiden three starts ago, going a mile 16th right here at uh, Laurel Park. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about the second half of our card. We're ready for the start. They're off. Welcome back to today at uh, the races. Race five kicks off the final late pick four of our summer session here at uh, Laurel Park. This is a maiden event, maiden claiming price, $20,000 going a mile on uh, the turf course. And we'll start with our top pick, Callie. This is a four, my single on my early pick four, mm -hmm. my best bet of the day, <laughs> Solomon's Choice. Uh, Mikey Gerales, Forrest Boyce gets the call. This will be second off the claim uh, for Mikey Gerales. Good looking race in his last start. Gets back to a firm turf course this afternoon. Enjoys the turf, absolutely. This horse was dragging Forrest around and unfortunately didn't get any coverage on an outside post, so she had no coverage on the backside. It on top of that, they were going a little a tick slower at 50 and change. Uh, and two back didn't get one. I feel like this horse just doesn't want to get dirt in his face at all. Uh, but ended up doing a lot of hard work up front last time out. Should be coming in guns blazing today. Didn't get that pocket trip nope. like they talk about in uh, <laughs> standard bread racing. Look, Mikey, very good. This type of layup, 20%, 21%. If route horses win 25% of the time, uh, that's a huge number for Mike Torales. The six is a Centillo for John Robb. Xavier Perez dropped to this level in his last start. Sprinting. Didn't yes. run a, a, a bad race at all. No. Comes back going around the ground this afternoon at the same level this looks pretty good to me Th also this is a strong this is a strong horse uh, that in centilio that they have coming back i just i think they did the right thing in trying to liven him up and going to short on the turf and he did ever and as you said we just talked about he did everything right he went to the lead he was game he ran his race a late closing horse caught him wide he didn't have a much of a chance to really meet react or meet that horse in the eye plus he was he's just too steady at the system so he gets that proper he's a big horse this is a big lumbering type of individual so i just think he's going to get the distance he's perhaps built a little bit better for today the eye trained his dam and she was sort of a a run one kind of mare just kind of grind it along he's a little bit. He's the same way. Uh, and he certainly might be the same way, but certainly could work with this group this afternoon. I think he's found himself 
a nice spot. The one is Night Boss for Anthony Ferrier, second off the claim for Anthony uh, this afternoon. He didn't get the smoothest of trips in his most recent. We're going to take a look at that right now. We're going to pick it up at the top of the stretch. Well, and before that, the runaway and rip it opened up in 46 and two, so needed more of a flow instead of he went. He got into a wall at the 316th. Finally, gets a little bit out there, and once he gets out there, starts to get rolling a little bit and makes a nice finish right at about this last 16 to the wire. So this is one that does need a little bit of room for Anthony Ferrier, which I got to give it to Anthony Ferrier. He's not a guy that loves turf, and he's giving Laurel Park turf this summer an honest good try. So the those horses are running for him as well. And uh, Night Boss, my concern with Night Boss is he does tend to get outrun. We're turning back uh, to a mile today, so he might find himself in the same situation Fair. where he's got to navigate his way through. Uh, Javion Toledo might have to work out some sort of trip for Night Boss 5-1 to one on the morning line. Race of six is another maiden event, a very nice maiden event. Big scratch in here. Take out the one uh, post time. This is for maiden two-year-olds going five-eighths of a mile post time for the Russells is out, uh, but I really do like uh, Dale Capuano's first time starter in here. You and I both do. Johnny's uh, from Albany. This one's out of Monster Sleeping. She was a serious racehorse yep. for Dale and uh, Chip Reed. She was a 10-time winner. She earned $537,000 for the same connections. She's working well, and we talk about Brittany being good with her first time starters don't forget about dale capilano right. he's at 32 <laughs> percent stunning me 32 percent johnny z from albany uh thanks for checking that guys i did not catch that late scratch uh, but i was actually with i was the company with johnny Al z from albany when he carlos worked this colt from gelding from the gate it was better than what it looks in that 48 and 2 got shot out of that gate like an absolute cannon and just wrapped up on this horse the entire time going her way around there. This horse is ready to absolutely rock and roll today. He certainly looks like he is. Dale always prepares his young horses. They have a lot of gate experience, and uh, that's, that's a big thing. Gate experience and making sure they know how to run into dirt. Yes. Uh, so the two big things <laughs> when you bring, and, know, and make sure they know how to go with a pony too. Uh, by the way, uh, but that's all I have to say about that. Let's talk <laughs> about the uh, four Israeli Army for another outfit. It was just heated up. Now, Benny Feliciano been quiet for a few years. He went off and did a few different things. He's back. He knows his way around the shed row, and he, he knows how to get a horse ready. And this one comes in with some good works out of a mare who's a three-time winner. I don't know if this horse is another Mo Money, Mo Honey, but <laughs> I doubt, that, I doubt but it. I doubt it. But uh, again, I absolutely agree with you, ben Felici Benny Feliciano Jr. Just really knowing his way around a horse, a half to soft landing, who I think was mismanaged early in her career. But looking at the dam, the dam broke her maiden for 10 at Parks with John Service. This filly was underneath um, on my selection, so you can go ahead if you guys want to, guys. Six, two, four, five, four with Horacio Caramanos. I imagine Caramanos has been working this horse out of the gate when Never short sampling, but whenever they clip together, as of lately, they've been hitting it at 40% together. Race six, an interesting maiden special weight for two-year-olds. Uh, race seven, this is our feature race of the day, and this is a very, very interesting race. It uh, pits uh, four <laughs> horses that ran together last time, and then a couple uh, new shooters and premier choice and uh, a few others. Uh, this is a nice race. This race is going three-quarters of a mile on the turf. I think that's important for a couple of these runners. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start with a video. Now, let me set this video up. There's four <laughs> horses in this video. The first horse we're going to look at is Tauber uh, going down the back stretch. And then into the stretch, we're going to pick up Tauber, Sue Loves Barbados, Monster Mason, and Rock and Sea Glass. So let's roll it there, Olivia. Let's roll it. And we get a look on the backside where I focus on Tauber, where he didn't quite get up there, had to be taken back. But if you pay attention, he gets a little bit rank. And right here, he pins his ears when Horacio Caramanos has to take this gelding back. And he didn't like it at all. You can just see. Um, actually, we're looking at the five uh, in this race. If we can see the five just has doesn't isn't loving this spot right here. He gets checked back a little bit. And as we see rolling along, when horses don't get the trip that they want, uh, they tend to get a little bit angsty. But that also puts them in the prime mental target to get really aggressive down the lane. And that's exactly what Tobert does. As you can see, white face, black hood on. He gets uh, he starts getting aggressive right about here. And then we see a lot of these horses. 
that we're going to be seeing today finish up nicely trying to chase after Pick and Sea Glass. Yeah, Pick and Sea Glass ran a big race, but here they all come. Uh, Pick and Sea Glass trying to hang on. Monster, Monster Mason, your eventual winner there, Tauber. But uh, this was a really good, really good race going down the second liar. And then there's Sir, Sue Loves Barbados in there who always shows up but doesn't always quite find the winner's circle but let's start there let's with the one there. sue loves barbados for dale capuano now interesting thing, uh, we're gonna talk about that in a minute jan Avelos gets the call uh, look there's no doubt i've been a little disappointed in sue loves barbados sure. uh, since breaking her maiden she hasn't won he hasn't won in over a year but he's always right there he right always there. shows up but this three quarters of a mile on the on the turf can make all the difference for Sue Loves Barbados. And that's exactly what I look like with Sue Loves Barbados. This this horse is able to go in between horses, so I'm not sure why everybody is just taking this horse out and going super wide around the turn. Jan had the right idea of, and it's a great idea of taking these horses out, letting him run down the stretch. I absolutely love it. Jan had the right idea of doing that. He just started to do that, getting wide out a little bit too early. It was right before that elbow, so I do think it took a little bit off of him, but at the same time, if we get back to the six furlongs for Sue Loves Barbados, and he, if he runs any race like that that he did last time out, he's going to be just fine for this distance here today. Let's talk about your top pick. That is the eight, Tauber, who we just saw win that race. This will be third off of break today. He's been in very, very good form, as you saw. Uh, since uh, since his return in July. And this hits well in the deal to Vico Barn as a barn stat. They're 21% lately, third after the layoff, so it does track very well. Once they, the deal to Vico team gets these horses in good form, they tend to stay that way for a little while. So, again, got testy on the backside. He overcame some aggression. He's he's always been one to be a little bit rank on the rail. He was that two back as well. Just gets, when he doesn't get, again, usually it happens with Phillies, but when he doesn't get his way, he seems to get really aggressive. And the only thing, if he bounces, he bounces. Uh, but I still think he's going to put in a nice show for us well, today. Well, you mentioned that he, he gets a little rank down the inside. I think this is a really good, really good draw for Tauber right. this afternoon. Uh, Horacio can keep this one out in the clear and maybe keep him a little bit uh, more comfortable. The five is my top pick. This is my price play of the day, 10 to 1 on the line. This is Monster Mason. You saw him in uh, that group of horses uh, just be getting beat a neck. Uh, to Tauber. He's been in very, very good form. He gets to stretch out the three quarters of a mile on the turf today. Ran a good number the last time he did run three quarters of a mile, but he seems to be getting better over his last three. His figures are going the right direction. The right direction. I just had him underneath with all the horses that I have picked in this race. Uh, I'm just, I am a little bit worried about the six, but as you said, he's been gearing up, so he might be gearing up to do well at the six furlongs again today. How about the three pick and sea glass? What a big race you saw pick and sea grass run in that video. I didn't give him a whole lot of uh, credence in that race. He was 14 to 1 on the board at post time. He gets beat three quarters of length, runs a lifetime best race. You know what's happening here. Force is going straight going, to the front. Going. Going to be joining Premier Choice on the lead. And what a grudge, I just, he was very, again, Keith Fustel grudgingly, you said this on Friday. That's a great comment from Keith Fustel. Yep. I, I'm worried about the six furlongs uh, for him because he just ran such a bang up race last time out. Uh, however, should the opportunity see itself, Back of October last year, he did show the ability to have some tactics of sitting off of the speed. So it'll be Forrest's play, but I won't be surprised if Forrest tries to gun for it this time again. So if you don't play any other race at Laurel Park today, tune in for our seventh race this here this afternoon. This is a very, very nice first-level allowance race going three-quarters of a mile on the turf. Race eight, final race of the summer session here at uh, Laurel Park. This is a maiden claiming event going seven-eighths of a mile for maiden Phillies and Mares three four and five-year-olds will start with the seven foul balls for grand motion georgia Ruiz uh, gets the call stretching to seven eighths of a mile today off a good effort and the perfect distance for this for this filly lost out to polish cookie who finally broke her maiden last time out but in that race last time out all five essentially broke up on broke out on top so somebody had to take back and it was Rui did that, and which was just smart, or it just happened a little bit late, swishing the tail a little bit down on the front side, uh, doing everything he can. A wonderful gallop out in that six furlong event. So I think the seven furlong is just right on the nose for this one. There you go. We're going to take a quick look at uh, the cloud horse, Communibus. I can never, never say, I can say I that word. I can say that word in science when I was a kid, so I'm I, not going to worry about I it. I have it, though. Do you want me to tell go you? Go ahead, it? go. Cumulonimbus. 
Cute. There you go. So we're actually looking at a bit. I was we were supposed to be looking at an off the turf event. So looking at this yeah. back in April. So we could actually take this if we could take this video down. But looking, talking about this horse going back to September of 2021 in that Gulfstream Park. That was an off the turf event that this one did in the maiden special weight. Now taking a look at the field in that maiden event, the winner easy come easy go just one non winner for two at the thirty five thousand dollar level at Gulfstream. Park and the second one, the runner up in that race, Sister Luann won the Martha Washington stakes at Gulfstream Park and then was six, was six only beaten by three lengths in the General Tree Three Lake George just here at Saratoga previously. So coming back, a nice runners, but we're getting back to preferred d distance and surface today for this horse. Yeah, that was off the turf event. The race uh, you're talking about uh, September 2021 yep. at Gulfstream Park. That was his first time, uh, her first time out. She ran a good solid effort, closing ground, finishing uh, third, beaten three lengths. Does attract Javion Toledo uh, this afternoon at uh, 15 to one on the morning line. That will do our card for this afternoon. Let's take a quick look at our lightning round. Here we go, jockey standings. It's still a pretty tight between Toledo and Caramanos. Toledo up one on Caramanos. I didn't I didn't see how many they each ride today, but maybe you have that in I for do. Us. We've got Horacio in five of them today and excuse me. Yes, Horacio in five, Toledo in six excuse me, five, and then Horacio are they both in five? Somebody's in five, somebody's in six, but either way, they're both last race together is race number seven. Toledo has one more chance after that in race eight. Horacio's in races one, three, four, six, and seven. Toledo's in two, three, five, seven, and eight. So leading at, this is this might be just, a t this might be nose by nose. We're, we're at a head bob, and they've been at a head bob about three weeks into this uh, fighting for this title. Well, we might be presenting these trophies late this afternoon. Let's move to the trainer standing, and this one is intriguing to me. So we started Friday's, uh, Friday's program with uh, Gonzalez and Rudy Sanchez-Solomon. They're tied at 18, Dale with 16. Nobody's done anything since. It's still <laughs> 18, 18, 16. Now, R Claudio has uh, four horses in today. Rudy Sanchez-Solomon has three horses in today. Claudio and Rudy have a couple live horses that look like they could get the job done. Now, Dale Capuano is only two behind. He has three in today. All three are live. We like Super all three live. of his horses. If Dale can win three today, he could come uh, come he, up with uh, the biggest like comeback that. ever in the history of uh, training. You know, if and if, and if anybody is going to do it, it's going to be Dale because Dale is just a little bit sneaky in that way. So especially with the couple that he has, they're so live here today. They certainly are. Uh, let's move on to the fact that this is the last day of the meet. Everything has to go. I know I'm reminding you again, but everything has to go home. We get started. First race, there's a carryover, $2,311, the Super High Five. All the money on Super High Five has to go today. Of course, the Rainbow Pick Six, that gets started in race three on our eight-race card. There's already a carryover of $2,600. Uh, that will grow, and then we'll see what the Late Pick Five does. But it all has to go. Keep in mind, you can bet more than the minimum on the Rainbow Pick Six. You can bet more than $0.20. Cents. So uh, go ahead, you know, splurge, have a party. We'll have some fun this <laughs> afternoon before we call it a summer here at Laurel Park. For Callie, myself, we're done. But Dave Rodman's up next with Scratches and Changes.